My name is Tom and I love all types of cars, especially turbocharged ones. I also enjoy wrenching and racing, so let's see what we can get into today in the Turbo Garage. We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. So I've got this cool garage, an awesome lift, and a great toolbox. But no garage is complete without an air compressor, and I definitely have one. All right, all right, I'll say it. Hi, my name is Tom, and I have a terrible air compressor. When it works, it takes forever to do even the smallest job, and it makes this awful high-pitched noise. Usually, I have to beg it to work. If it finally decides to work, then it usually shuts off at the precise moment that I need it. Hey, get back here! Most of the time, I just give up and use my foot pump. This is driving me crazy! After many years of living with my cheapo air compressor that was never really up for any job, it was time for an upgrade and I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. This time, I'm getting a real compressor. Since I've had great success with my Benpak 2 Post Lift and Ranger Toolbox, I went straight to the pros at Benpak and told them all about my wimpy compressor. I wanted a stout unit that would be capable of supporting any project that I decide to tackle in the future. The folks at Benpak are always great to talk to and ready to help. In fact, I like to call and ask for their advice on all sorts of things. After helping me choose the right shirt, they recommended their 7.5 horsepower, 80 gallon, LS 7580V601 industrial grade compressor. Oh yeah, that'll do. In no time, a big delivery truck showed up with this giant 600-pound beast. The truck driver and I mangled the packaging a bit getting it up the driveway, but we managed and I wasted no time tearing into it. After I got all the packaging out of the way, I could finally admire this beautiful piece of engineering and spend a little quality time with it. Me likey. Oh my goodness. Let's take a closer look at what makes this such a great compressor. The first thing that you see is the big Trimax Extreme Duty cast iron three cylinder two stage pump. It's quite a sight to behold, but its real beauty lies in its efficiency, as a larger pump will make more power consistently without generating as much heat. A big pump like this that runs at slower speeds is not only powerful and efficient, it's also quieter. Right next door is the best electric motor that you can get, an efficient, reliable, and high-performing Baldor 7.5 horsepower unit. For 80 years, Baldor has been an industry leader, so you've got great peace of mind that you're getting the highest quality motor available. This is a belt-driven compressor, which allows the pump to spin slower than the motor, which further improves efficiency and reduces wear and tear versus a high RPM direct drive setup. These powerful goodies are perched atop a huge ASME-approved 80-gallon tank that is built by Manchester Tank, who is the world's premier manufacturer of pressure tanks. As you continue to examine this compressor, you'll see high-quality parts and smart engineering everywhere like durable, moisture-fighting copper piping and a pressure switch that works together with an unloader valve for easy starts and long pump life. After taking a closer look, 
you know you've made an excellent investment in a compressor that is built with the best components and will offer many years of trouble-free service. Reading through Ben Pack's owner's manual, the first step was to get it wired up. I relied on the pros for this. My electrician added another breaker to my electrical panel and a dedicated power wire, since the compressor requires 230 volts and 31 amps of juice. With that job complete, the next step was to fill it up with the appropriate engine break-in oil. Filling and keeping an eye on the oil is easy too, with the fill and sight glass right up front. Our next task was securing it to the ground. For this I used a combination of Benpak's half-inch anti-vibration pads and some good old-fashioned rubber hockey pucks. I learned about this trick on the Garage Journal forums, and this combo should allow for nice, quiet operation. I just drilled a hole in the center and sandwiched the puck and the rubber pad together. Here's how it turned out. With the compressor firmly planted to the earth, we could move on to the next step. Other than choosing the right compressor for your needs, the next big consideration is where you'll place it in your garage, how you'll plumb the lines, and what accessories you'll need. I put lots of thought into this and found it best to think about the tasks I typically take on and then planned my setup around those tasks. With that in mind, I decided on this compressor location with the airline running up the wall with a drop and hose reel between each garage door. There are limitless options here. This is what will work best for me. So here are the items I chose to make the most of my new compressor. First we have the RapidAir MaxLine air piping system. I chose their 3 quarter inch master kit because it's easy to install, it's affordable, it will never corrode, and the kit was perfect for my needs. It's also easy to expand a system like this in case I need to add some more lines or drops to my garage someday. I also picked up a couple of 50 foot retractable hose reels, RapidAir's filter and regulator, a flexible line to connect from the compressor to the regulator, and other fittings and short airlines to get me up and running. Now that I had all of my parts and a plan for where to put everything, it was time to get to work installing them so we could have air everywhere. I started with the hose reels. I began by removing the mounting bracket off of the reels so I could drill a perfect template on my pieces of 2x8 lumber. On the other side of the board, I countersunk four half-inch hex bolts and washers that left studs protruding, allowing for easy mounting and removal of the reel. I then pre-drilled two pilot holes on either end of the board from mounting to the wall, taped up my studs, and gave each board a few coats of bright white paint. After measuring and leveling the mounting boards, I used lag bolts to secure the boards to the wall studs. An impact driver makes quick work of this job. Next, I screwed on air couplings to the end of the hose reels. This is simple enough to do, just be sure to use some high quality thread sealer to prevent leaks. Wipe off the excess sealer, and you're all done. With the board secured to the wall, it was time to hoist up the 32 pound reels. I then threaded on the washers, lock washers, and nuts and tightened them up. Here's how the hose reels turned out. Nice! Our next task was installing the air piping system. I expected an easy install, but the 100 feet of HDPE tubing had other ideas. Once I tamed that wild tubing, I attached the flexible rubber line from the compressor to the wall-mounted rapid air regulator and filter. From there I started forming and mounting my first long run of max line tubing. It was fairly easy to work with and held its shape once bent. Rapid air provides these clips to mount the tubing to the wall. They can be paired up too in case you're running more than one line. Just screw them into the wall and they hold the piping nice and tight. 
Now it was time to run my first drop from the ceiling down the wall. After careful measuring, I cut the tube using the supply tool. Here you can see the aluminum sandwiched between the two layers of HDPE. After making a cut, prepare the pipe for assembly using the provided tool. It expands the piping slightly and cuts a nice beveled edge on the end. Then spray a little soapy water on the end and insert it into the fitting. Make a quick reference mark and then tighten to three quarters of a turn. That's all there is to it. After that it was time to install my second airdrop. I used the included T fitting and ran the line over to the next bay. After connecting all the lines up, I mounted the airdrop to the wall and connected my jumper hose, which connects to my hose reel. So here's how it all turned out. Oh my goodness. Let me tell you, I could not be happier with this setup. Between the awesome Ben Pack compressor, the clean and simple airlines, and the convenient hose reels, this setup will make jobs in the garage so much easier. All right, it's time to hear this beast sing. The manual calls for 30 minutes of break-in time with the drain valve open. After that, it's ready to use. Here we go. After using my new Trimax a few times now, I can't believe that I suffered through that old wimpy compressor for so many years. This is a serious piece of equipment that has tackled any job I've thrown at it without even trying. A compressor like this allows you to do more and do it faster. Big jobs like painting a car are now possible. Oh, and my bicycle foot pump is getting a well-deserved rest. Thanks for watching. I hope you find this video helpful when choosing the right compressor and layout for your garage. If you ever have any questions about my setup, just send me a note on my Facebook page. So with that said, thanks again folks, we'll see you next time.